because the socialists left the private capitalists in charge, these societies were not torn apart the way the communist societies were because there was so much resistance within the communist societies to the government taking it all over and running it. And that led to different levels of civil liberties, civil rights, and so on, which were then part of what the struggle between socialists and communists was all about. From time to time, they set aside their differences and worked together. But in general, they were competing to the same working class, in one case saying, this is the way you should go if you're a socialist, and the communists saying, no, this is the way you should go if you're a communist. That's how it continued roughly from the end of World War I, 1918, 1919, until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1989. With that, the Communist Party of Russia and the Communist parties in other parts of the world collapsed. They had tied their well-being to Russia. Russia was their leader. Russia, Soviet communism was what they talked about. This, by the way, USSR, just to remind you all, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. They did not call, call, call themselves a communist society. As I said, they never did. Communism was where they were going. Communism was the name of their party, was not the name of the system they were still in. That was at best transitional toward, but not itself, a communist society. But with the end of the communist parties even pushing that, we went back, as it were, to the pre-World War I world, in which there were only socialists of one kind or another, and most of them believed that the government shouldn't do more than regulate capitalism, somehow getting the best of what that system had, but forcing it to take care of people in a way that without government intervention would never have happened. In other words, the state provides health care, free education, subsidized transport, subsidized housing, and all the rest. But you know, this accommodation to the collapse of the Soviet Union was never universal. That spirit that Marx wrote about, that ghost that haunts the modern world, this image of a communism really different from capitalism, never went away. And in the aftermath of the collapse of the Soviet Union, after 1989, all of the people who still believed in that, and there were millions of them, began a process of self-criticism. What had gone wrong? Why did the Soviet Union collapse? Why was it unable to survive, let alone take us in a transitional way to this communism that people believed in and wanted? This community where we nurture and care for and develop one another. And they reached a conclusion over the last 10 years, 15 years, that there was a crucial element missing in both what the socialist parties did and what the communist parties did. That if we corrected that, these folks said, we could resume the transition to a really different society that would embody what co communism always meant for the centuries. And here was the idea. Neither the socialists in places like Scandinavia or Western Europe, the social democracies, all of that, nor the communists understood that a problem was the way capitalism had organized work. They had organized it so that there were two groups, a very small group called employers, capitalists, and a very large group called employees, workers. One of them was rich and powerful, and the other one wasn't. I won't have to spell it out because you all already know. The small group of employers worked the economy so they would be rich and powerful, more so as time went on. In that way, the few, the capitalists, resembled the few masters in slave systems, the few lords in feudal systems. Capitalism hadn't broken out of that small group dominating large group in the economy. 
And because the socialists and the communists didn't change that, the socialists let the private capitalists run their businesses in the capitalist way. The Communist Party people in Russia, China, Cuba, North Korea, and so on, they did the same. They didn't let private capitalists run the business. They had state officials doing it. Again, a very small number of state officials making the decisions for the mass of the working class. One was private capitalism, one was state capitalism, but neither was anything like the communism that was in this kind of socialist mind, particularly after the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe fell apart.